bidirectional charging, and vehicle-to-grid, our V2G are now among the most hyped-up concepts in the electric vehicle charging industry. From a concept from 2013, first used by Nissan LEAF, to now a technology every EV car company wants in its vehicle, it's no doubt a very ingenious idea that will make managing energy a whole lot better. I am sure you've got a lot of questions and theories about this, but not to worry, because your doubts will be all cleared up. Hi, welcome to Everything Cybertruck, where you'll be getting all the latest updates on the announced Tesla Cybertruck. If you enjoy this video, let us know in the comments section below and why not support us by hitting that like and subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell icon as well so you'll be the first to know each time we release a new video. It's free. Probably the first question you might have in mind is, what do they actually mean by bidirectional charging? Bidirectional EV charging is exactly what it sounds like, that is EV charging that goes two ways. In a more detailed way, bidirectional charging is a method or system that allows us to not only charge the batteries of electric vehicles but to also take energy from car batteries and push it back to the power grid to help balance momentary spikes in electricity demand. This is powered by vehicle-to-grid, or V2G, technology. Vehicle-to-grid describes a system in which plug-in electric vehicles, such as battery electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, or hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, communicate with the power grid to sell demand response services by either returning electricity to the grid or by throttling their charging rate. So it could be used as synonyms to bidirectional EV charging. Let's talk a little more about what we know, that is, unidirectional or one-way EV charging, which is just the exact opposite. The difference is, with unidirectional, electricity flows from the electric grid into the electric vehicle, but with bidirectional EV chargers, electricity can flow both ways. Since at any given time 95% of cars are parked, the batteries in electric vehicles could be used to let electricity flow from the car to the electric distribution network and back. A 2015 report on potential earnings associated with V2G, found that with proper regulatory support, vehicle owners could earn $454, $394, and $318 per year, depending on whether their average daily drive was 32, 64, or 97 kilometers, that is, 20, 40, or 60 miles, respectively. How does it work? Let me explain this real quick. When an EV is charged, AC or alternating current electricity from the grid, is converted to DC or direct current electricity, the kind that can be used by a car. This conversion is carried out by either the car's own converter, or a converter located in the charger. And when you want to use that energy stored in the EV's battery for a house or send it back to the grid, the DC electricity used in the car logically has to be converted back to AC electricity. Although currently there aren't many bidirectional EV chargers out there, all contain internal converters. This means that they can handle the electrical conversion back from DC to AC. They can even control the amount of power supplied to and from the battery. This energy conversion wasn't possible until the introduction of bidirectional charger technologies. These technologies make it possible for cars like the Nissan LEAF to be used as a backup storage system, and a source of energy in your home's energy ecosystem. Since 2013, the Nissan LEAF has been the sole vehicle capable of bidirectional charging in the US. But Hyundai, Kia, and Lucid all have future vehicles that the companies say will include this capability. On a global level, this is expanded to include other automakers utilizing the Chatamo protocol like Mitsubishi's Outlander PHEV. These early movers have been supported by the fact that the Chatamo protocol and connector have made this capability available earlier on. Both automakers have proven this concept by bringing forward demonstration projects like Nissan's Power Supply Ecosystem projects and Mitsubishi's Dendo Drivehouse. The real turning point will be when vehicles utilizing the CCS protocol and connector begin to enable this functionality. This technology and process have already been demonstrated by charging systems from manufacturers, like Princeton Power and Hitachi. Downsides 
With technology as advanced as this, it's difficult to see where any downsides could come from, but they are, even though not many, and an example of such downsides are the concerns about the potential of accelerated battery degradation, and also the moderate value with a relatively small fleet. In a filing with the Texas Electric Utility Commission, in which Tesla was responding to questions about how electric utilities should approach electric vehicles, the automaker summarized its view of the vehicle-to-grid technology. At the same time, any discussion regarding the capabilities of EV-related technologies must recognize as a first principle that customer experience and willingness for participation is key. There certainly may be an opportunity for future projects and programs that focus on advanced technological integration, such as the eventual aggregation of EVs in the future to provide grid services in wholesale markets. In any setting, it is important to remember that EVs are modes of transportation first and foremost for customers. There is also an opportunity to evaluate stationary storage assets, first to provide similar grid services capabilities from a wholesale electricity market perspective. They do note that there's value in the vehicle to grid once the EV fleet becomes large enough, which is starting to become the case. The future. From 2013 till now, many advancements have been taken to make bidirectional EV charging a more accessible technology for many EV vehicles, now many more vehicles are able to add this feature to their cars in the near future. For example, the upcoming Hyundai Ioniq 5 crossover is reported to come with bidirectional charging. As for Tesla and the Cybertruck, we don't yet know if this vehicle will come with this feature, but in the past, other Tesla models have been said to have the technology installed which will require an over-the-air update to be activated, but so far there's been no news on that. So maybe the Cybertruck might come with this tech as well. And it'll be more effective on a vehicle such as the Cybertruck due to its improved range, power, and battery technology in the 4680 batteries, and being a powerful tool, it should come with this feature if possible. For consumers, this technology will give people an incredible amount of control and flexibility over which energy they use for their home and car, or even allow them to be compensated for sending energy back onto the grid. For utilities, this change means having another resource available to support the grid, balance electricity demand, and to smooth consumption spikes with the help of electric car batteries. For automakers, it represents a new opportunity to move beyond transportation and into the energy management business. Bidirectional charging is the wave of the future, and we'll be looking forward to seeing these rapid advances in each of the key areas needed to make this technology widely available. We'd like to know from you, what do you think about bidirectional charging technology? Do you think it'll show up in the Tesla Cybertruck? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. We'll be waiting. Thanks for watching, and again, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more awesome content like this one coming in the future. See you later.